Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes. There can be no further negotiation with the EU. Only capitulation. Removing intent from rugby's laws is causing confusing miscarriages of justice. European listing exodus is just beginning. Ryder Cup 2023 Live, opening ceremony updates and latest news. Yes, I'm gutted not to be at the Ryder Cup, but hopefully I can return one day. There can be no further negotiation with the EU. Only capitulation. Telegraph. Removing intent from rugby's laws is causing confusing miscarriages of justice. Telegraph. Rugby should take into account a player's intent when making disciplinary decisions, according to an op-ed in The Telegraph. The writer argues that referees should be allowed to use their instinct to judge intent and nuance in order to avoid glaring miscarriages of justice. The author argues that intent cannot be disregarded in a sport which showcases human fallibility as starkly as rugby. The current system, in which referees rely on still images and video replays, does not take into account the unseen forces at play during a rugby match. The author also suggests that the current system benefits Tier 1 nations who are more familiar with the referees and have a better understanding of what the referees are looking for. In order to maintain the diversity and vibrancy of the sport, the author argues that rugby should remember that it is a sport played by humans and officiated by humans. European listing exodus is just beginning. Reuters breaking views. Building materials firm CRH and packaging giant Smurfit Kappa are among a growing list of companies seeking to decamp from Europe to U.S. exchanges. In this Views Room podcast, Breaking Views columnists discuss what is prompting groups to leave and why the rot is unlikely to ease. Ryder Cup 2023 Live, opening ceremony updates and latest news. The Independent. The Ryder Cup is set to begin with Europe looking to reclaim the title from the USA. European stars Rory McIlroy and John Rahm are expected to lead the European team, with rookie Robert McIntyre praising their welcoming and inclusive nature. The captains, Luke Donald and Zach Johnson, will decide on their pairings for the Friday morning foursomes later today. The USA won the last Ryder Cup two years ago and are aiming to win on European soil for the first time in 30 years. Meanwhile, Europe is seeking to bounce back from their heavy defeat in 2021. The tournament will take place in Rome for the first time, and the opening ceremony is set to begin at 3 p.m. British summer time. Europe must win 14.5 points to regain the Ryder Cup, while the USA requires 14 points to retain it. Yes, I'm gutted not to be at the Ryder Cup, but hopefully I can return one day. Telegraph. Professional golfer Graham McDowell, who has represented Europe in the Ryder Cup four times as a player and twice as a vice-captain, expresses his disappointment at not being able to participate in this year's event due to his involvement with LIV Golf. However, he states that when the Ryder Cup comes around, all golfers bleed blue regardless of their tour. McDowell shares his experiences and memories of playing in the Ryder Cup, describing it as a unique and special event. He discusses the intense pressure and camaraderie involved and the impact it had on his career. McDowell believes that Team Europe, led by Captain Luke Donald, has a good chance of winning this year's Ryder Cup due to the home advantage and the support of the fans. He mentions players like Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Victor Hovland, Shane Lowry, and Matt Fitzpatrick as potential leaders for the team. Though he is disappointed not to be there in person, McDowell expresses his support for Team Europe and hopes that they will bring the trophy back. U.S. soldier Travis King arrives in Texas after being expelled from North Korea. The Globe and Mail U.S. Army Private Travis King has been expelled from North Korea and returned to a U.S. military base in Texas. King had crossed the heavily militarized border into North Korea two months ago while on a civilian tour of the border. He was immediately taken into North Korean custody. It is unclear if King will face disciplinary action from the U.S. Army. North Korea treated his case as one of illegal immigration. The Swedish government, which represents U.S. interests in North Korea, retrieved King and brought him to China before he was flown back to the United States. King had faced allegations of assault in South Korea and had pleaded guilty to one instance of assault and destroying public property. Gazprom Bank buys Russia mega shopping centers from IKEA-affiliated business. The Globe and Mail. Gazprom Bank Group has acquired 14 mega shopping centers in Russia from Inca Group, the operator of IKEA stores, for an undisclosed price. Gazprom Bank plans to develop the retail space, which covers 2.3 million square meters. The deal is expected to close within a few business days, after which Inca centers will have no operational business in Russia. Inca Group halted all retail and production operations in Russia in February 2022, but the mega shopping malls remained open as they provided essential consumer goods. 
This is the latest exit by a Western company from the Russian market following the conflict in Ukraine. More than half of Nagorno-Karabakh's population flees a separatist government says it will dissolve. The Globe and Mail. The separatist government of Nagorno-Karabakh has announced that it will dissolve itself and the unrecognized republic will cease to exist by the end of the year. This comes after Azerbaijan launched an offensive to reclaim control over the region and demanded that Armenian troops disarm and the separatist government dissolve. Over half of Nagorno-Karabakh's population has already fled the region, with over 66,000 people seeking refuge in Armenia. The mass exodus was triggered by an agreement reached on September 20, which allowed the free, voluntary and unhindered movement of Nagorno-Karabakh residents to Armenia. A fuel depot explosion on Monday killed at least 68 people and injured nearly 300. Women's football sees record transfer spending ahead of new WSL season. The Independent. Women's Super League. WSL, clubs spent £2.4 million, $3 million, during the 2023 mid-year transfer window, double the amount, £983,000, spent in 2022, according to FIFA. The success of the English national team has contributed to the increased spending. A record £400,000 transfer fee was paid by Arsenal for Chelsea player Kira Walsh last summer. German economy set to shrink in 2023, experts say. Deutsche Welle. Germany's economy is predicted to experience a slump in 2023, according to a report from leading economic research institutes. The report, commissioned by the government and published twice a year, expects a contraction of 0.6% in Germany's gross domestic product, GDP, this year. The experts blame skyrocketing energy prices in 2022, linked to Russia's war in Ukraine, for halting post-pandemic economic recovery. The report also highlights concerns over political insecurity. However, economists are optimistic that the economy will bounce back in 2024 as inflation eases and wages rise. Activists from Kenya, Cambodia are among alternative Nobel Prize winners. Al Jazeera. The Right Livelihood Award, also known as the Alternative Nobel, has been awarded to activists from Kenya and Cambodia, a human rights defender from Ghana, and a humanitarian group that rescues refugees in the Mediterranean Sea. The laureates were recognized for their efforts to save lives, protect nature, and defend the rights and livelihoods of communities. The winners include Phyllis Amado from Kenya, Mother Nature Cambodia, SOS Mediterrane, and Eunice Berkman Amissa from Ghana. The award was created in 1980 to honor efforts that are overlooked by the Nobel Prizes. The winners will be recognized at an awards ceremony in Stockholm in November. By decree, Nagorno-Karabakh will cease to exist. The Sydney Morning Herald. The separatist government of Nagorno-Karabakh has announced that it will dissolve itself and the unrecognized republic will cease to exist by the end of the year. Over half of the region's population has already fled, according to Armenian officials. Last week, Azerbaijan launched an offensive to reclaim full control over the region and demanded that Armenian troops in the region disarm and the separatist government dissolve itself. A decree signed by the region's separatist president stated that Azerbaijan would allow the free, voluntary and unhindered movement of Nagorno-Karabakh residents to Armenia. Trump is attacking electric vehicles. Automakers already bet their future on them. CNN. The auto industry has invested over $100 billion in electric vehicles, EVs, and created more than 100,000 U.S. jobs, but a second term for Donald Trump as U.S. president could jeopardize this progress, according to this utility dive op-ed, Trump has described EVs as too expensive and not having enough range but declining costs and a wider variety of models, along with government support, are helping to drive consumer demand. Nevertheless, EV adoption has been slow, reaching just 7.2% in the third quarter of 2021. Automakers are relying on incentives from the Biden administration to boost demand and meet their EV investment commitments. The report warns that a Trump presidency would likely reverse these incentives, leaving automakers jerked back and forth every four or eight years. It argues that automakers need the subsidies to compete with Tesla and Chinese EV manufacturers and maintain competitiveness in the industry. The report concludes that Trump's proposals would undermine U.S. automakers' EV investments and hand control of the EV future to foreign manufacturers. Tech giants ramp up cloud security under pressure from Washington. Washington Post. Microsoft, Google and Amazon have started to explain more about the measures they take to secure customer data in an attempt to differentiate themselves from competitors on security grounds. This follows the recent theft of emails from senior U.S. officials, which heightened fears about the country's dependence on the largest cloud computing firms. 
The three companies have also provided information to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which has requested its review board investigate a major hacking case involving Microsoft's cloud. China sends security chief to Germany for key talks as it eyes close cooperation. South China Morning Post. China's top security official, Chen Wenqing, has traveled to Germany for a high-level bilateral meeting as China pledges deeper cooperation with Berlin. Chen, a Politburo member and Communist Party secretary of the Central Political and Legal Affairs Commission, attended the China-Germany high-level security dialogue in Berlin. This is the first time China has sent its top security official to Germany for such a meeting. The dialogue focused on topics including counterterrorism, organized crime, and online security. Chen also met with Italy's deputy prime minister and foreign minister during his trip to Rome. Well folks, that's all the news we have for today. It's been quite a diverse range of stories, from the ongoing Brexit negotiation woes to the excitement of the Ryder Cup. But let's dive into some analysis, shall we? First up, we have the analysis of the Brexit negotiation from Barnabas Reynolds. According to him, the UK's failure to understand the fundamental differences between its legal system and the EU's legal framework led to unnecessary concessions and damage to the country. He warns that the current approach of further concessions will only weaken the UK's position. Personally, I think Reynolds has a point. It's important for negotiators to understand the nuances and differences in legal systems in order to negotiate effectively. Next, we have the discussion on intent in rugby's disciplinary decisions. The writer argues that referees should be allowed to judge intent and nuance in order to avoid miscarriages of justice. I couldn't agree more. Rugby is a sport that showcases human fallibility, and it's important to take into account the intent behind players' actions. After all, we're all human, and mistakes happen. Moving on to the exodus of companies from European exchanges. It seems that CRH and Smurfit Kappa are just the beginning of a trend. The columnists at Reuters Breaking Views discuss the reasons behind this move and why it's unlikely to ease. It's clear that companies are seeking more favorable conditions elsewhere. This is something that European exchanges should be concerned about and should work to address. Now, let's talk about the excitement of the Ryder Cup. Europe is looking to reclaim the title from the USA, and there's a lot of anticipation around the tournament. Graham McDowell, who has represented Europe in the Ryder Cup multiple times, shares his disappointment at not being able to participate this year. But he believes that Team Europe has a good chance of winning, especially with home advantage and the support of the fans. I'm sure many golf fans are eagerly watching the tournament and hoping for an exciting competition. Moving on to some international news, we have the story of US soldier Travis King being expelled from North Korea. It's unclear what disciplinary action he will face from the US Army, but it's certainly an interesting development. And speaking of interesting developments, Gazprom Bank has acquired 14 mega shopping centers in Russia from Inca Group. It seems like Western companies are exiting the Russian market, likely due to the conflict in Ukraine. This is something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. In other news, the separatist government of Nagorno-Karabakh has announced that it will dissolve itself, leading to a mass exodus of residents. This comes after Azerbaijan launched an offensive to reclaim control over the region. It's a tragic situation, and our thoughts are with those affected. On a more positive note, women's football is seeing record transfer spending ahead of the new WSL season. It's great to see the sport growing and gaining more recognition. And speaking of recognition, the Right Livelihood Award, also known as the Alternative Nobel, has been awarded to activists from Kenya and Cambodia, as well as a human rights defender from Ghana and a humanitarian group. They are being recognized for their efforts to save lives, protect nature, and defend the rights of communities. It's always inspiring to see individuals and groups making a positive impact in the world. And finally, we have some tech and international news. The tech giants Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are ramping up their cloud security measures in response to recent hacks and to differentiate themselves from competitors. This is a crucial step, as the security of customer data is of utmost importance. Meanwhile, China's top security official has traveled to Germany for a high-level bilateral meeting, signaling deeper cooperation between the two countries. It's interesting to see the dynamics of international relations at play. Well, folks, that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed the news and analysis. Now, it's your turn. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective.
Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.